everyone, I'm Vanessa from the Bolinas Library. Today we're going to be reading some books about our beautiful earth that we live on. And in honor of spring, and Earth Day, and something we should be celebrating every day, which is our planet, I'm going to read a book, starting off with this one called My Friend Earth, written by Patricia McLaughlin, illustrated by Francesca Sana, with permission from Chronicle Book press and let's see what happens oh this book has a little flap who is sleeping there my friend earth wakes up from a winter nap Hello. she hears the busy spring sounds the farmer's hoe tap tapping in the garden the cause growing The silent seed, the spider spinning silver, the robin and the wrens. There's so much. She sees all the little things. And the large, the long-winged albatross crossing the sea. The mole tunneling in the underdark. She guides the chimpanzee to her night nest. And the zebra baby to find his mother. And in the hundreds of black and white striped mothers. Look at all of this space. She tends the prairie where sun dappled wild horses run through grasses that swish against their legs. The tundra where the reindeer graze for moss and the glistening ice where the young polar bear pads on mitted feet. She guards all the creatures in all the oceans and the black manta rays sleek like shadows the shining parrotfish the tiny krill who swim with millions of the other krill to look big and the whales who are big my friend earth pours the summer rain to fill streams flowing down mountains through the fields to the rivers to the earth to the sea Sometimes she pours too much rain, flooding towns and meadows and roads until she dries the land. Sometimes she blows fierce autumn winds, sweeping the limbs of trees and shingles from the rooftops of barns until she stills the wind so red and orange and yellow leaves float to the ground. When cold comes again, my friend Earth sprinkles the snow, whispers silence covering the dens where the baby black bears are born in soft darkness, drifting over the icy pond where the turtle sleeps in mud, settling into the empty nests of birds. Under the white, the silent seed is cradled in the dark soil, watching, Oops. waiting, oh, to fly up again in the warm, bright sun of spring, the end. Wow. Earth is pretty busy. There's a lot of things going on and maybe you have noticed some changes happening around in your neighborhood, in your town. Maybe the days are getting a little bit longer or maybe there's some more birds chirping or less birds chirping or maybe some blossoms coming up, some flowers. What is something new or different in your neighborhood or something that's changing? some animals, maybe there's more squirrels, or less foxes, or I don't know, what else? Today, we're going to make some flowers, and I made these flowers, and you can find a template online, and you can make your own, and it kind of looks like three little prongs here, and you can cut, you can print these out on a piece of paper, and you can always come to the library, and we can print one out for you. And once you have your printouts, you're gonna need two sheets. You're gonna cut them out and you can take your time cutting. And I like to go and cut the general shape first before I then go in and do kind of some of the little detailed, cutting out the detailed area. And then you're gonna go along and take each little end and glue it in one after another and then glue the little round circle on top and then with an adult's help, you can take a push pin or 
a paper clip and you can push it right into the, an eraser of a pencil. And then once you get some wind going, and out here there's lots of spring winds, so you can put it outside or you can see if you can blow it like that. You can decorate it however you want. You can put stickers on it. You can paint it. You can write some words on here of all the things that you love about your planet. I have birds, flowers, rain, sun, water, fish. Those are just a few of the things. Rainbows. What else? Sunflowers. Foxes. Rabbits. There's lots of things. I don't know about you, but I've been noticing a lot of flowers blooming around lately and it makes me so happy because it reminds me of spring. And so we're going to sing one more song about flowers and we're going to hold up our fingers and pretend they're little flowers. What kind of flowers are your fingers going to be? Maybe mine will be daffodils because I've been noticing some daffodils around. Five little flowers standing in the sun. See their heads nodding, bowing one by one. Down comes the rain, down comes the gentle rain. And the five little flowers lift their heads up again. Hello. Now let's sing a song about a little seed that grows into something big and beautiful. First, let's picture a little seed. And can you picture what you would be if you were a little seed? What color you would be? how small or how big you would be. All right, now picture that seed and let's sing the song. I'll plant a little seed in the dark, dark ground. Out comes the yellow sun, big and round. Down comes the cool rain, soft and slow. Up comes the little seed, grow, grow, grow. And what have you grown into, little seed? What are you? This next song, is called a hunk of mud and if we're thinking about planting seeds in the ground we have to have good soil for those seeds to grow up out of. There's all different kinds of soil and dirt all over the planet and some soil is good for certain kinds of plants to grow and some soil is better for other kinds of plants to grow and soil can be hard and dense and soil can be light and fluffy and when there's lots of water and it gets to the earth and the dirt they can get very muddy and that's when it's very fun to play in. And now let's pretend we are a hunk of mud. Oh, I wish I was a little hunk of mud. Oh, I wish I was a little hunk of mud. Then I'd ooey and I'd gooey over everybody's shoey. Oh, I wish I was a little hunk of mud. And maybe you don't even have shoes on, in which case it feels kind of nice to get squishy between your toes. In this book, we're going to talk about where we are, and it's called Here We Are, Notes for Living on Planet Earth, Oliver Jeffers. So we can pretend that we're, maybe we're aliens coming down from outer space, and we're wondering, hmm, how does this planet work? Here's our solar system. Here we are. Well, hello! Welcome to this planet. We call it Earth. It is a big globe floating in space on which we live. We're glad you found us, as space is very big. There is much to see and do here on Earth, so let's get started with a quick tour. The planet is basically made of two parts, land and sea. First, let's talk about the land. It's why, it's what we're standing on right now. We know lots of things about this land. Can you stomp your feet and remind yourself that you are on planet Earth, on the ground, unless you're swinging from a tree while you're watching this, in which case you would have to put your foot against a tree to remember where you are. Then there is the sea, which is full of wonderful things. We know a bit about the sea, but we'll talk about this some more once you've learned to swim. Maybe you do know how to swim. There is also the sky, though that can get pretty complicated. Well, on our planet, there are people. One people is a person. You are a person. You have a body. 
look after it as most bits don't grow back. And here is, here is your person. The most important things for people to remember are to eat, drink, and stay warm. People come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. We may all look different, act different, or sound different. But don't be fooled. We are all people. There are animals too. They come in even more shapes, sizes, and colors. They can't speak, though that's no reason not to be nice to them. And they might be speaking, but you just don't understand them. You may not be able to speak yet either, even though your head is filled with questions. Be patient, you'll learn how to use your words soon enough. Generally, how it works is that when the sun is out, it's daytime and we do stuff. And the rest of the time is night when it's dark, save for the moon, so we sleep. Please, oh look at, is this baby still awake? Oh no. Things can sometimes move slowly here on earth. More often though, they move quickly. So use your time well. It will be gone before you know it. Though we have to, ha though we've come a long way, we haven't quite worked everything out, so there is plenty left for you to do. You will find, figure lots of things out for yourself. Just remember to leave notes for everyone else. It looks big, Earth, but there are lots of us he on here, so be kind. There is enough for everyone. Well, that is planet Earth. Make sure you look after it, as it's all we've got. Now, if you need to know anything else, uh, just ask. I won't be far away. And when I'm not around, you can always ask someone else. You're never alone on Earth. And there's all the people lining up to take care of you if you are a baby. And there's lots of people all over in our communities that we all get to take care of each other. And Taking care of each other is also a part of taking care of the earth. Let's read this next book called An Ode to the National Parks, You Are Home by Evan Turk, with permission from Simon and Schuster. To the chipmunk in her burrow, sleeping beneath the leaves to keep warm. To the resilient bison in the steaming osis of the endless winter, you are home. To the wild flowers painting the warming hillsides to the pro pronghorn chewing the grass of her first spring. You are home. To the prowling bobcat slinking between slivers of light and shadow. <gasps> Do you see him slinking around? To the constellations of blinking fireflies in the warm summer nights. You are home. To the herds of elk trumpeting the arrival of fall to the forest of twinkling aspen, turned golden by the shortening days. You are home. To the children in the city surrounded by windows, noise, and crowds. To the children on the farm surrounded by endless fields. You are home. To the child whose family has just left its first footsteps on new shores. To the child whose ancestors lived on the lands before the stars and stripes took them as their own. You are still home. Beneath the soaring doorways of stone and peaks that pierce the ceiling of clouds. Within the corridors of ancient breathing trunks of trees and the teeming roof, reefs of the ocean floor. You are home. Gazing toward the highest of branches, stretched up to the galaxies swirling beyond the moon, you are home. Home is a memory of footsteps and wing beats, of sunrise and sunset, of the moving of mountains and rivers of ice. A memory carried through wind and rain, echoing in canyons carved away down deep in the heart of the earth and in our hearts alike. 
Through rising seas and thawing ice, a home's walls may topple, its floors may crack. But what keeps a home standing can never be broken. A sense of belonging, sung by the streams, from valleys to peaks, over thousands of miles, through thousands of hearts. From every river, star, and stone comes the eternal refrain. Whoa! You are home! And at the end of this book, we get to see all the pages of where each page takes place all across the United States. There's so many places in the world to discover. If you ever travel, you might notice that there are different trees or plants or people or buildings or food or traditions where you go. And you might also notice there are a lot of similarities too from where you came from. If you are home and you're not going anywhere, you might also notice still that there are new things around you or new to you that you can still discover right in your own neighborhood. And wherever you are, you will learn that life is very diverse. This planet has so much in it and we're all sharing the same space and we all have to learn how to take care of each other and share so that we all can continue living where we're living and have the things that we need to survive and live well. In our last book called Here and Now, let's see what happens with a couple kids when they observe what's going on around them in their world. And this book is by Julia Dinos, and illustrated by E.B. Goodall with permission from Hutton, Mifflin, and Harcourt. Right here, right now, you are reading this book. It's true. The book is in your lap, or in your hands, or in someone else's hands. And look at this picture. The girl's holding a book within a book within a book. Oh my goodness! You are sitting, or you are standing, or you are wrapped up in a book. Under your bum, under your feet, in a seat is a seat, a floor, or a cloud if you are on an airplane. And all under all of those things is the earth, the grass and the dirt, the earthworms and the fossils, the rocks. And the earth is spinning in the middle of space. We don't know why, but it is. And you are too. Right here, right now, while you are reading this book, many, many things are happening. Rain is forming in the belly of a cloud. An ant has finished its home on the other side of the planet. Somewhere, a telephone is ringing. An idea is blooming. Grass is pushing up through cement. A friend you haven't met yet is sitting down to dinner. There are animals, wild ones, and tame, living and breathing all around you. Muscles are growing, cities are growing, cuts and broken bones are sewing up and healing. Unseen work is being done. Right here, right now, you are becoming. Isn't that wonderful? When we think about what we're doing right here, right now, it's kind of a magical question because it seems so simple, but it's something we forget to ask ourselves. And it really is a helpful tool in rounding our body and helping us be present with what's right around us and our own selves right now. What are you doing right now? Well, are you watching this story time? What else is going on right around you? What are the sounds in your room? or in your house, or just outside the window. Doing this exercise can be very helpful in realizing that we're connected to the earth, to our bodies, and to what's right around us. So we can feel good in that and help 
what's going on right in that moment. Sometimes we can take a little notebook and we can uh, you can draw some pictures and make some observations. They sometimes people call it field notes. And you can draw what's going on. Maybe there's a beautiful flower outside your window. Or maybe you're drawing a little brother or sister and they're doing something silly. Or there's a cat across the street chasing something. You could draw that too. And you can make a whole book of all the things that you see right around you in your world. Thanks so much for joining us today. Here's a couple more books that you can find at your local library at this very moment by Jim Arnosky about all the things that are happening around the world in one moment. Listen to Our World by Bill Martin Jr. and Michael Sampson. Earth Verse, Haiku from the Ground Up by Sally M. Walker. My Forest is Green by Darren LeBou. The Gold Leaf by Kristen Hall. And The Song of the Wild, a first book of animals, animals by Nicholas Davis. There's so many books. These were just a couple that I found here on our shelf, but there's many, many more. And I hope that you're finding some to read at home. What's your favorite book that you're reading right now? What is it? Well, I can't wait to hear more about it. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.